sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. And each week we start out by singing a song together. I encourage you, don't just listen to the song. Join in with me and my family as we sing one of my favorite hymns about the victory that we have in Christ. week we began a three-week journey through the book of Jonah and we left it off right in the middle of the most exciting part. So this week we're going to read starting out with verse 1 of chapter 1 of the book of Jonah and read up to our new material today. And before we look into God's word, let's pray together. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for each person joining in with us. And God, I thank you that your word is truth and your word is living, and your word is powerful. I pray that you speak to our hearts today by your Holy Spirit. Cause your word to come alive and help us to take hold of your truth with joy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's pick up with Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 16. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it, because I've seen how wicked its people are. 
But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused a terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us? They demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for they had already, for he, Jonah, had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. Oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin. And don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him, the Lord, a sacrifice and vowed to serve him, the God of Jonah. Now, last week we talked about and we focused in on Jonah running from God, running away from God. And we talked about what that looks like. And we compared it to our own lives and we would say, well, we would never intentionally run away from God, but we talked about what running away from God actually looks like. You know what? When people don't obey God, they're running from God. When people go their own way instead of going God's way, they're running from God. When people are not quick to say yes to the Holy Spirit who is speaking to us, asking us to do things, say things, give things, when, when we're not quick to say yes to Him, we're actually running away from God. And then there are some results that we can expect if we ever find ourselves running away from God because you know what? God is life. God is love. God is joy. And God is peace. And when we run away from God, we're running away from life. We're running away from love. We're running away from joy. We're running away from peace. We can't expect to experience those great things in our lives if we're running away from God. We also need to remember that another result of running away from God is that we will run into trouble. When you run away from God, you run into trouble. It brings more trouble into our lives. And then lastly, we talked about running away from God will affect more than just you or more than just me. It affects our friends. It affects our family. It affects everyone connected to us when we find ourselves running away from God. Just like it affected those settlers from the ship that Jonah was on trying to run away from God. It affected them and their livelihood and almost cost their lives. And it was all the result of Jonah running away from God. Now this week we're going to pick up the story in the very next verse in Jonah 1.17 where it says this, Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. 
The men had thrown Jonah overboard. Jonah was sinking down, running out of air, going down. It was all over for Jonah. No, it wasn't because God has a good plan for Jonah. And we can go ahead and say that God has a good plan for us. He always does. His plans are for our rescue, for our hope, for our future, for our success. That's what God's plans are for us. And that verse 17 says that the Lord arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside that fish for three days and nights. Can you imagine being in the belly of a very big fish? And it's tight and it's cramped. The Bible says that when Jonah was in there, it was like seaweed was wrapped around his head. And you, you know it smelled terrible to be in the stomach of a big fish. And he was there three days. Three days. And then in Jonah 2, verses 1 and 2 says this, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. Here's my question. Why did it take Jonah being in the belly of the fish three days with seaweed wrapped around his head? Why did it take him three days to begin to talk to God? He could have started the first day, right? But it took him three days. It says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble. And he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, O Lord, and you heard me. So as Jonah remembers the prayer that he prayed inside the fish, and he's writing it down for us to be able to see that, he's saying, look, I cried out to the Lord. I, I realized that I was in trouble. Again, well, how did it take him three days to realize that he was in trouble and to cry out to the Lord? But you know what? When he cried out to the Lord, the Lord answered him. When he called out to the Lord, he was as good as dead in the bottom of the sea, in the belly of a fish, and God heard him. See, this is the turning point. This is when Jonah turned from running away from God and he turned to God. And it was a good thing. It's always a good thing to, to turn to God. See, but in order for him to turn to God, he had to recognize where he was. And it took him a while to recognize where he was. I mean, sometimes it's hard, right? Even in the story of the prodigal son, if you're familiar with that, the parable that Jesus told, you know what? The, the runaway son, he finally came to his senses. And that's what has to happen in our lives. If we're running away from God not following God, going our own way, disobeying God, running away from Him. we got to recognize where we are in order to turn to God. Let's continue reading. Let's pick it up in Jonah 2, verse 7. Jonah is saying this, As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord. And my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. So this gives us a description of what's going on and then all of a sudden his prayer continued to God and he had an earnest prayer going out to God in the throne room of the universe, the throne room of eternity. See, first of all, in his process of turning to God, Jonah recognized where he was, but then he remembered the Lord. He called out to the Lord from where he was. And that's what we need to remember. When it's time to turn to God, we've got, we got to recognize where we are and that we're away from God and running from God. And then we have to remember the Lord. Let's continue in verse 9, where Jonah says, I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise. Now, as he's in the belly of the fish, in the bottom of the sea, with seaweed wrapped around his head, you know what he does? He begins to offer praise to God. That was the next step in him turning to God. And notice Jonah didn't wait until he was rescued to begin to praise God. The Bible tells us that God has given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
every time we're down and feel like we're on our way out, it's time to offer praise to God. And this was part of Jonah turning to God. He recognized where he was. He remembered the Lord. And then he began to praise the Lord, even though he was still in the same situation that he began in. Right? Let's continue with verse 9. I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, and I will fulfill my vows. Now, we don't know the vows and the promises that Jonah had made to God, but we do know that Jonah was a prophet, that God would speak to him, and then he would speak to people, whether it was one person or whether it was a group of people or whether it was an entire nation. Jonah was God's mouthpiece. And at some point, before the book of Jonah even picks up the story of his life, Jonah had made some promises to God. And he had vowed to God that he would serve him and speak for him. He, that's what his promise was to God. But then he found himself running away from God. And now, in his part of turning back to God, he says, I will fulfill my vows, the promises that I've made to you, God, I will fulfill them. And notice he's saying this still in the stomach of a big fish in the bottom of the sea. With seaweed wrapped around his head, he's praising God, and his heart is turning in repentance. See, he's turning from disobedience to obedience. He's saying, look, I realize that I was running away from you, but... Now I want to turn to you, and now I choose to obey you, even though he don't even know if he'll have the opportunity to obey God. He could still die in the belly of the fish. It wasn't like his deliverance was already there when he was saying, God, I'm going to fulfill my vow because I promised to you at one point that I was going to live for you and that I was going to be your prophet, and, and I was living an obedient life. And we talked about last week, he was prejudiced against these people in Nineveh. He didn't want to encourage them or help them or give them hope. He hated them. He was running away. But now, he's turning in repentance back to God. Let's go back to verse 9. I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise. A sacrifice of praise. I will fulfill my vows, Jonah says. And then he makes a bold statement. He says, For my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Wow, what a statement. See, Jonah realized that if there was any rescue, that if there was any salvation, it was going to come from the Lord. And that was the step, the next step in him turning to God. You see, Again, he recognized where he was. He remembered the Lord. He offered praise to God. He turned in repentance from disobedience to obedience. And then he came to the conclusion that salvation and rescue, and as far as, that, as, far as it is concerned, hope at this point in his life can only be found in the Lord. And that was the point of him turning back to God. I want to call your attention to Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, as we close today. And it says this, For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And as we talked about Jonah coming to the point where he realized that salvation and rescue and hope only comes from the Lord. As we close today, I want to ask you, do you find yourself in a situation where you feel like you're in need of rescue or you're in need of salvation or you're in need of hope? I tell you today that those things are only found in Jesus. And just like Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so Jesus after he died on the cross and willingly laid down his life for you, for your sin in your place, he was in the tomb for three days and three nights. But he rose again. 
And just as a picture of Jonah is he's going to be rescued from this big fish, and we're going to talk about that next week, Jesus came out of the grave. He rose again, defeating death, hell, and the grave. And he is our hope. Have you put your trust in him? Have you put your faith in him, your confidence in him? Have you ever come to the point and realized where you are that you are separated from God? See, all of us start out being separated from God. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that the wages or the paycheck of sin is death. But it goes on to say this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Have you ever been rescued out of your sin and out of your separation from God. If you haven't, I want to tell you something. You can come into a relationship with Jesus today, no matter where you are, no matter if you're watching on your cell phone or your TV or on your computer, you don't have to be in a building with stained glass windows to surrender your life to God. You can do it right now, right, right wherever you are. Now, Here's what you need to realize. You need to realize that your sin separated you from God. You need to confess your sin to God. The Bible says if we confess our sin, that God is faithful and He's just, and He'll forgive us and wash us clean. And then there's one more thing. The Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. That word Lord is a name, but it's a name, it's one of those title names. Like, my name is Dean, but I have a son who calls me Dad. I have a wife who calls me Honey. Those are relationship names. And Lord is a relationship name. To call Jesus Lord means that you come to a point in your life where you say, you know what, up until today, my life's just been all about me. But from now on, I want my life to be about you, Jesus. I want to live for you. I want to know you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. If you've never done that, and you'd like to today, I want to invite you to pray with me right now. Now listen, there's nothing magic about this prayer. I could send you these words on paper. We could put them on the screen. You could say them 20 times before you go to bed tonight. And it wouldn't mean anything if all you're doing is reading words or repeating words. But if you listen to this prayer, and if this is what you want to say to God from your heart, you got some good news. I know God will hear you. I know He'll forgive you. I know He will adopt you into His family. I know that He will send His Holy Spirit to be in you and with you. And I know, according to His promises and according to His Word, that one day, when you take your last breath here, your heart beats this last time, You'll spend eternity with God and everyone who surrendered their life to Him for all of eternity in heaven. If that's what you want, I ask you to pray with me. Let's pray together. I prayed a prayer like this one Friday morning. I've never been the same since. Let's pray. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for me in my place for my sin. I believe you rose again from the grave, just like the Bible says. And Jesus, I realize today that I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. I ask you to forgive me. And Jesus, help me to turn away from the things in my life that don't honor you and don't please you. Help me to turn away from those things. By the power of your word, the power of your spirit, help me to change. And Jesus, today, I ask you to be my Lord. Because up until today, my life's just been all about me. But from now on, I want my life to be about you, too. I want to live for you. I want to know you. I want to serve you. Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for adopting me into your family. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be in me and with me. Thank you for rescuing me.
Amen. If you just pray with me, we would love to send something to you. All of our friends and partners here at Elation Church, we made it possible for you to get a free gift in the mail. I need you to somehow respond under this video or go to our website at www.elation.church and let us know your address because we would love to send you a book. It's a little blue book. It's got about 40 devotions in the front of it that'll help you get started good on this journey of knowing God and Jesus being your Lord. And it's also a New Testament. You can't buy it, but we would love to send it to you. It'll be free, no strings attached, but you have to let us know your mailing address for us to get it to you. Thanks again for being with us here today at Elation Church, and thanks for being a part of our Elation family. If you would like to partner with us in our mission, there's a couple of ways you can do that. The first way is just by hitting the share button right under the video that you just watched. Another way is that you can partner with us financially. You can do that by texting the word ELATION to 28950 and then by following the prompts. In doing both of those things or either one of those things, you'll be joining us in our mission of bringing good news of great joy to all people. And we'll see you right back here next week at Elation Church. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church.